Hello everyone, today I'm going to be doing a bit of a guide for Emma Politis. If you aren't familiar with the character, she's recently come out. She is a Dark Ranger PCs, which doesn't really mean much to you. All that you really need to know is that she's pretty fast. I believe she has the same stats as Lua, which is really cool, but also a little bit concerning if you are someone that plays RTA. Now, before we truly get into things, I do want to mention that this character is, of course, a character that will kind of go up and down in viability or in strength depending on how fast you are or the quality of your gear, which you could argue for most characters in the game, but it feels a little bit different because Sea Phantom Politis is a character that is specifically fixated on being fast or at the very minimum benefits a lot when she is faster than other characters. Now, since this is a guide, I am going to give you a couple tips and tricks in case if you find yourself struggling a little bit in terms of trying to find the gear or understanding what kind of compositions that she works with. But unlike a few other characters that are a bit more play however you want and they're much more easy to play, this character is a little bit more difficult, so keep that in mind. And again, before we get into the different builds and what kind of variations that you'll probably find with this ML Politis character, as you can see, C Phantom Politis has 120 base speed, decently high HP at around 6000, decently high defense as well at 600, and nothing else because of course she is supposed to be a ranger that for whatever reason doesn't have any effectiveness but does have the need to debuff. However, I do think that for the sake of making this character much more balanced, and the fact that she also has a Soul Burn Ignore ER in her kit, it does make sense for her to not have that much effectiveness, since it's kind of used to counterbalance how OP she probably is going to be. Now, in terms of kit, her skill tree reads that she hosts a ball and she gives all of her allies rage buff, which is really, really insane because number one cannot be dispelled. And they recently buffed it so that now the attack and speed increase of rage is now 20% as opposed to what it was before. And furthermore, her skill three at the same time as providing the rage buff also dispels two buffs from all enemies and also applies a speed down debuff to the enemy team in addition to pushing everyone back or decreasing combat readiness of the enemies by 20%. This is kind of a mixture of both Lua and Conqueror Lilius' skill three, where of course you have some sort of control on skill three, you have the slow and or speed buff uh, that is present in a character like Lua's kit, but you also have the control in terms of pushing back that Conqueror Lilius is mostly known for when you have her skill two. Beyond her skill three, C Phantom Polis' S2 also gives her a 100% chance to increase stealth after you've mulled it. And the only way to trump her S2 passive of gaining Guiding Light is to add an equally as ridiculous passive, which is that she decreases the amount of resources gained by the enemy by 50%. So that includes Fighting Spirit, Focus, characters like Commander Pavel, Ocean Breeze Lulica, all these characters struggle when it comes to C Phantom Politis. However, I do want to make note that in case you were curious or you I guess randomly came across it. This does not apply to Dark Corvus, who I just learned today does not actually get affected by C Phantom Politis. I thought that his whole getting hit and cooldown thing was a resource. It's not. I'm kind of dumb, but I thought you might want to know. And now finally, although most skill ones for characters, unless if they're damage dealers, are usually kind of lackluster, C Phantom Politis' skill one is really, really crazy. Now, although all it specifically says is that you trigger a dual attack from the ally with the highest attack once you are enraged, something that a lot of people kind of sleep on is the fact that it dispels one buff as well. So in that case, especially if you are using a character or you are dragging a character that has a very strong skill one, or if you have a character like Death Dealer Ray paired alongside C Phantom Politis, you have plenty of opportunities to not only strip any immunities from the team against a character like Last Rider Crow or a Mediator Cowrick team, but you can also apply the Venom several times between not only C Phantom Politis, but a Death Dealer Ray or whoever is being dragged alongside her for the dual attack. Kind of the most ridiculous skill one that we've seen in terms of aggression or being high tempo, Smilegate, you really cooked with this one. Okay, now you may be wondering how she plays or what kind of game plan she's looking to do when it comes to her actual in-game usage. And the honest truth is that she's so flexible that she has plenty of different roles, whether that is as a buffer and you're just trying to use her as a rage buff provider and gaining additional stats, or if you want to use her as a stripper and dual attacker with their skill one, all these different ways that you can kind of play her are viable. And that's not even talking about, again, her strongest strength, in my opinion, which is that she prevents characters like Ocean Breeze Lulica or any fighting spirit focused character from even being able to really make use of their kit with her skill two passive. But of course, how you choose to play her is completely up to you. 
Go wild, she's really good. Now, something that you may also be curious about when it comes to the C Phantom Politis character is how good her imprints are. Is everyone really, really overhyping her? Is she so good that I need multiple copies of her? And the honest truth is that no, her imprints are not super impactful unless that you are pretty much trying to min-max your damage on certain damage dealers like someone like Janua or even a character like Spectre Tenebria who I suspect is probably going to be one of the strongest characters with this specific character. Now of course if you are going to pair the C Phantom Politis with a character like Candy or a solo carry a very high damage character in general this attack percent increase is going to be absolutely bonkers but if you are running a low effectiveness or low effect resistance composition and all you're looking for is kind of just hp look no further than her imprint which of course is going to be really nice that being said she's a guiding light character and ultimately even if she does get knocked out so long as you have enrage she isn't that easy to take advantage of or to kind of one shot so in terms of actually needing imprints not necessary whatsoever that being said it does help if you are missing out a little bit on damage or you're trying to reach certain thresholds for damage that you otherwise needed in either gear score or through imprints on other characters now in terms of sets speed set is really nice and having her two set piece be hit set is also really nice because of course you want to have high effectiveness if you want to run something like hp defense or even something like immunity that also makes sense or in some cases if you just want to be as fast as possible and you don't have a secondary set that is completed that is also fine because ultimately if you're just looking for speed you'll take what you can take speed is her best set currently now for c phantom politics's best artifact there are so many different ones that you could choose you could choose something like elegate candle you could use something like song of stars you could use something like spatial temporal fan if you want to hide one of your characters or your main dps all of these are kind of up to your personal preference. There is no one size fit all kind of artifact and even something like Unseen Observer that gives you additional souls and increases your combat readiness is really nice as well. Any kind of artifact for rangers honestly are really important or really impactful, especially once you take into consideration that she already has Guiding Light, so you don't need to really care for Guiding Light and you have so many more options because of it. Now you are likely curious as well whether or not this character is good for PvE and Honestly, there isn't much to kind of track or kind of tell because she isn't a specific water, fire, green, or, you know, grass element character. So there isn't a specific hunt that she feels particularly insane at. That being said, though, having rage is kind of ridiculous, and her S1 is a guaranteed high attack dragging dual attack. So if that is the case, you could definitely argue that maybe for something like a Banshee or even a Wyvern in the future, she could definitely have some value. She also is stealth, and I'm not entirely familiar or sure if uh, you are able to hit stealth characters. Some PvE fights are able to do that, some aren't. But I'm sure that if you especially are trying to use C Phantom Politis for something like clearing through adventure and you manage to get her really early, I'm sure she'll be really good that being said though i don't think the pve aspect in terms of fighting monsters is super impactful however for something like arena and guild war i can definitely imagine that people are going to be using this character to set up a character like janua early so that he has access to his skill one and then he gets to do all of his nuking his damage potential i could also imagine people using someone like c phantom politis to enable a character like ambitious tywin that is going to see good value especially if you're in a controlled environment like guild war or arena now on the topic of synergies let's really talk about the characters that make this character kind of go above and beyond and i've already kind of teased a few of these whether that's navy captain landy specter tenebria the characters that directly synergize and make use of the rage buff like characters like janua or ambitious tywin all of them have good use or good synergy with c phantom politis and it is much more based on your composition that you draft or the playstyle that you enjoy for you to actually decide whether or not the character is worth it for you now, of course, with every character, there are their counters or the specific ways to kind of deal with the C Phantom Politis. Now, ultimately, there are definitely things that you could punish when it comes to C Phantom Politis, whether that's debuffs or dealing with certain characters like Sage Ball, especially if you take into consideration C Phantom Politis not having a book and Sage Ball having extremely high effect resistance. Obvious answers to kind of dealing with C Phantom Politis is cleaving her, but that's just the issue and I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate. Now in terms of actually trying to counter her, if you're curious as a faster-ish kind of player, I do think that she still struggles, again, if you 
just outspeed her with a character like Conquer Lilius, uh, and you just press your skill 3 and provoke her, because that's how openers work. But ultimately, I have found that there are also compositions involving characters like Ludwig, uh, like Zeo, Ludwig Ran, or Pavel, Faithless Lydica, things of these nature, that kind of makes the Phantom Politis prone and weaker to cleave. And in that sense, the character kind of feels similar to a Lua or a Conqueror Lilius, which makes complete sense because not only is she similar to Conqueror Lilius and Lua, she also shares a decent amount of their similar weaknesses, though she definitely has much, much stronger strengths when it comes to her actual kit. Okay, now in terms of whether or not she's a must pull the honest truth is that a lot of openers recently have been really really strong i think about characters like knockwall i think about technically a character like Laia, who isn't necessarily an opener but faster characters that clearly have been designed in 2024 as opposed to 2021 or 2020 and of course while she does have a lot of strengths she is a moonlight character and we haven't even seen what a character like ml senya looks like that being said though her kit is definitely above average and in my opinion, if you are someone that is struggling with either PvE or if you are trying to be a bit more creative or want to have a bit more fun when it comes to playing aggressive, faster paced, higher tempo games, I think that Sea Phantom Politis is a great candidate for your account or a great character just in general to be using whether it's in Guild War, Arena, or anything in between. Now whether or not you'll actually be able to play this character, keep in mind that Having her faster, of course, is going to be more rewarding than having her slower, but even having her at a slower kind of pace, I do think that Sea Phantom Politis has a lot of value, whether that's as a cleave setup, an aggro setup, or even if you're just pairing her with a slow character in general. And now finally, unlike some of the <clears throat> more unrealistic scenarios that we've seen sometimes uh, when it comes to the character, I did have a couple players in my Discord kind of go through and see how C Phantom Politis was playing in various different ranges. Uh, one specific player you might Maybe you do know, maybe you don't know, maybe you fought him, maybe you haven't. He's one of my mods. I kind of wanted to see how he would play and see how good the Sea Phantom Politis and this Conqueror Lilius composition alongside single or double carries would go. And as you can see here, of course, there is a load of different, you know, factors here to consider. Number one, it's the fact that this Kozak individual or this right side player tried to pick Lionheart Sermia to counter a character like Navy Captain Landy. Now, in terms of what's actually going on here, you would argue that maybe you're a bit afraid because the Navy Captain Landy or the Spectre Tenebria are now going to get dragged and then Lionheart Sermia gets to use her skill three, but uh, uh oh, there is literally no way for this character to do anything, the Lionheart Sermia that is, simply because there's half of the resource bar that's gone. And now I'm not going to bore you with the entirety of the match, but if you can imagine what happens when Lionheart Sermia is not able to press any buttons and a Navy Captain Landy is allowed to just sit there and salvo every single turn, it looks like this. There's a bunch of buttons, there's a lot of damage that's being taken, and, and even with a character like Arrowell who has a lot of mitigation with their escort, in simply one turn, this character is pretty much gone. Right, uh, you have Navy Captain Landy, of of course, getting you know an Elbrus, which is really funny, and haha, yeah, he has Salvo, haha, everyone hates Navy Captain Landy, but this is the strength of the character. Navy Captain Landy right now has Vigor, has Rage Buff, and self provided her an Attack Buff, and if you put all that together, that is thirty thousand damage that was just done onto the Arrow Wall. Does that seem kind of crazy, or does that seem kind of crazy? And even through again two activations of dual attacks with the Lionheart Sermia, we ended up with a Lionheart Sermia that literally wasn't able to use her S3 at all. And now here we have a second match that looks a little bit different. And of course, as you can see here, this game is a little bit more cleave oriented. There's, you know, some faster units like Bunny Dom, there's a Zeo, and you may be wondering also like how to see Phantom Politis stack up against characters that are maybe a little bit too fast or a little bit too slow. Uh, and again, this is a versatile kind of composition. There's a Pera here who probably shouldn't have gotten outsped, but even if she did or didn't, there is a Moon Bunny here that kind of puts a damper on things. And as you can see, there is so much tempo that is just being given because there's rage coming out on the Sea Phantom Politis. And now the Spectre Tenebria has pretty much full reign to do whatever she wants. There's a Remnant Violet that's about to be given not only rage, but also a push up to then one shot whatever he wants to. Oh, actually, he doesn't even need it. Actually, I didn't realize that he was going to cut. I, I thought I thought he was going to be somewhere. Okay, whatever. In any case, 
as you can see here, the Bellion is taking an insane amount of damage. This is kind of a pseudo variation of how some people will pair a character like Conqueror Lilius alongside Remnant Violet to just instantly nuke something. And even with an insane escort kind of mitigation provided by the Para here, the Bellion almost got one shot. That's insane. And although, and even if the one shot didn't end up happening, as you can see here, it's kind of a very easy cleanup for a team like Moon Bunny and the Politis. You have a bunch of damage dealers, and again, this is why I was kind of highlighting that the Spectre Tenebria, in my opinion, is really good with Politis, number one, because again, you're giving a character like Spectre Tenebria uh, an attack buff, and also uh, giving her a bunch of speed so she can take laps. But even if you pair another single target carry, like whether that's Remnant Violet or an ML Ken alongside this composition, it feels quite strong. And this was just another kind of quick match where, of course, and I'm so sorry for flashbanging your eyes, but of course... There is a lot of value that comes out of, again, being a bit more aggressive or having the aggressive edge against the enemy opponent, even though the right side opponent here did have an idea of, you know, trying to push back the Moon Bunny or controlling the team with a character like Zeo and the Para and the Last Rider Krau. It ultimately wasn't enough for the Politis, who has great value just in terms of, again, pushing out insane tempo and giving a lot of buffs and utility to the left side team. What I will say, however, is that, again, as with all opener-based characters, it is a little bit difficult to play, and it does kind of feel like a character that you'll need to kind of dip your toes into and spend a lot more time playing to really understand. But if I were to kind of put a rating at the end of this all, I would definitely recommend that anyone that can afford to pull this character, pull for her. But if you are somewhat of a Senya enjoyer, you could also wait for that. I'm not going to be your financial advisor or anything like that. But that's going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you again for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. If you did, make sure to like, comment, turn on the notification bell, and subscribe. Let me know what you think about this kind of format. Uh, this format, again, was a bit more guide focused. And I ultimately haven't quite decided on which one uh, will work a little bit better, but I've been trying to be a bit more informative and I guess give a bit more tips to players because it feels like there's a lot more players that are coming in because of the Overlord collab or a bit more interest or just in general have been joining. But in any case, guys, thank you again for watching. If you would like to let me know what you think of the content, I would really appreciate it, but I will see you on the next one. Good night.